Hi, I'm Patrick Anderson, and this is the Mach-E Vlog. Today, I'm gonna to go over some options and recommendations for charging your Mustang Mach-E at home. So let's get started. There are a ton of options for charging your Mach-E at home, and at first it can be a little bit daunting, but we're gonna simplify things, and I'll give you my recommendations for the setup that I am using right now. Once you get everything set up, it'll be very easy just to plug in your Mach-E and let it do its thing. First, let's start with the Ford Mobile Charger. This is the charger that came in the back of your Mach-E when you picked it up. You can use this on a 120 volt or 240 volt circuit. If you use 120 volts, it's only gonna give you about three miles of added range per hour. If you are lucky and you have a 240 volt outlet that you can plug it into, it will give you about 20 miles of added range per hour that you have it plugged in. I don't know about you, but the three mile option really won't cut it for my daily usage. If you're lucky, you already have a 240 volt outlet in your garage or carport or wherever you're gonna be plugging your Mach-E in, but unfortunately it probably isn't the one that's needed by the Ford Mobile Charger or what's standard for a lot of EV chargers, and that's a NEMA 1450 outlet on a 50 amp circuit. A lot of people will refer to this as an RV outlet because this is the same type of outlet that RVs will plug into when they're on campgrounds and whatnot. If you have a dry or some other outlet like that that's 240 volts that's in your garage, I still recommend switching over and having an electrician install a NEMA 1450 outlet for you. I just think for a long-term solution, you don't want to have to use adapters or a subpar solution to charge your Mach-E. It's a long-term investment, so you might as well go with the standard NEMA 1450 outlet. Now, it may surprise you if you contact an electrician, they may not know exactly what you need if you ask them to install an EV outlet in your garage. What you will want to tell them is, I want a NEMA 1450 outlet on a 50 amp circuit, and they should be able to take care of the rest. The cost for having an electrician do this will vary widely. Part of that is based on electricians charging different rates for different parts of the country, but there are other factors to include as well. For example, the longer it is from your circuit breaker to where you need the outlet, that will cost more money. And if unfortunately you need some modifications to, done to your circuit breaker or any other changes, that can get very costly. For example, if you have no more room on your circuit breaker panel, they'll have no choice but to add like a sub panel or completely reinstall your circuit breaker panel. And those costs will add up pretty quickly, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. The best thing to do, contact an electrician and get a quote. I can give you an example based on the installation that we had done here at our place. The electrician just was able to add a 50 amp circuit in my existing circuit panel, ran the cable up and over to where my garage is, my circuit breaker panel was in the basement so just ran it up and basically in the basement ceiling over to where the garage is and then punched a hole into the garage and kept the cable in the wall in the garage ran it around the corner to where I wanted the outlet installed and then put the NEMA 1450 outlet there. It was a relatively straightforward installation. It required about 40 feet of cable. And I think the total cost ended up being about $600 to get that installed. Now for the next part, we're gonna talk about the actual charging equipment that attaches to that plug and goes into the Mach-E. I was talking before about the Ford mobile charger, but that's not what I use on a daily basis. I like to keep that in the back of the Mach-E in case I'm out and about and for any reason, if I have an emergency need for a charge, it's right there in the car with me. Of course, I could just unplug it every day and take it with me or unplug it only on the, the long trips that I'm going on, but I'd rather just keep it in the car. First of all, you never know when you're going to need it. And second of all, the outlets that these things run on, they're not really meant to be plugged and unplugged every day. I also did not go with a hardwired charger like the Ford Home Charger or other options. And this was due to two reasons. First of all, it's nice to be able to take whatever charger I have with me, like if I move to a new place, if I have a hard wire charger, I have to leave it there or cover up the exposed wires once I have it removed. The other nice thing about having a charger that just plugs in on the wall is if I'm having any type of issue at all with it, I can always unplug it, plug in the Ford mobile charger and have a backup option for charging or testing. So what other options are out there? Actually a ton. Because Ford is using the J1772 connector for the Mach-E, pretty much any connector you see out there 
will work with the Mach-E. These chargers fall into basically two different categories, smart chargers or dumb chargers. I went with the smart charger. What's the difference between smart and dumb? Well, a dumb charger, basically you plug it in and it provides juice to the Mach-E. There's no settings or options or anything like that. It's just gonna provide juice. A smart charger connects to your Wi-Fi network and allows you to, via an app or a website or something like that, monitor the output, change some settings, change the schedule, and do some cool things like track how much energy your Mach-E is using and how much it's costing you to charge the Mach-E. Of course, some of these things, like the schedule, can be done within the Mach-E or Ford Pass, so it's a bit redundant, but that's sort of the difference you get between smart and dumb units, and I went ahead and went with the smart unit. The one I chose was the ChargePoint Home Flex. ChargePoint is one of the companies that's part of the Ford Pass network for public charging, but they also make home chargers, and the one that they make for home is very nice, and it actually integrates into the ChargePoint app that you can use to connect to ChargePoint public chargers as well. With the ChargePoint app managing the ChargePoint Home Flex, you can select your energy provider as well as the rate plan, and it will actually track how much it's costing to charge your Mach-E on a, like a nightly basis, or you can go into their website and download like monthly stats and everything like that. It's really pretty cool, and I hope to use the data to share with you on how much it's costing me to run my Mach-E. It's also super easy to install. They give you everything that you need to mount it on your wall, and I mean everything. It even includes the drill bit and the socket that you need to mount the hardware on the wall for you. I think the total installation on took me about 15 minutes to get it mounted and plugged in and functional. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in buying that one, but it may be hard to find it in stock. It seems to go in and out of stock every couple of days. If you're patient, it'll probably come back in stock. If you're not patient, there are some other options. Another one that I've seen that is highly recommended is the Juice Box. It also has an app, so you can do a lot of the same functions as with the ChargePoint Home Flex with the Juice Box, and I'll put a link to that down below as well. If if you'd rather, you can also go with a dumb charger. And the reason you might want to do this is one, it'll save you a little bit of money. And two, if you don't have good Wi-Fi in your garage, it may not do you any good to have a smart charger anyways. And you can manage a lot of those functions with the Mach-E or Ford Pass as well. A couple of the most popular brands for dumb chargers are Clipper Creek and Grizzle E. Both of these are considered to be highly reliable and very durable. They're highly recommended by a number of websites. And I've seen nothing but good things about them. Of course, I'll throw in a couple of links down below for these as well. One of the things you want to make sure of when you order any of these is that you're ordering the correct version. Each of the manufacturers will sell multiple versions of these chargers. You want to make sure you select the NEMA 1450 version of these chargers or any charger that you're picking if you have a NEMA 1450 outlet. As long as you do that, you should be good to go. And once you get everything set up, the charging of your Mach-E will be super easy. Just remember, Ford recommends only charging to 90% on a regular basis. If you do need to charge to 100% for like a road trip, that's fine. But on a regular like daily basis, they recommend only going to 90%. I've actually set mine to 85% because right now I don't need that extra range. So that's fine for me. That's it for my charging options and recommendations. If you have any questions or recommendations of your own, drop them down in the comments below. And before you go, if you could do me a favor and hit the like button, and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe subscribe button. And if you found this video useful, make sure you share it on your favorite social media platform, whether it's Twitter or Facebook. I want to thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope you have a electrifying day.